welcome to the Data Beast show. We also have a free newsletter, so do check it out on databeast.community. Today, uh, we've got Luke Ambrosetti and Glenn Van der Linden, and we're going to talk about the fact that the, the CDP battle needs to end, you know? So this is a follow-up to our trailer that we released last week. So yeah, here we go. Thanks for joining, uh, Luke and Glenn. Yeah, absolutely. Thanks for having us. Yeah, Absolutely. Thank you. Um, We'll start with you, uh, Luke, uh, first question for you. So at Snowflake, you work with vendors from, from both camps, right? Composable and packaged. Um, what are your high level thoughts on this battle, right? And um, is it even a real battle, you know? Uh, yeah. What do you think? Yeah, sure. And I'll say these are my, my personal thoughts, you know, they're not representing, you know, Snowflake in any official capacity here. My personal thoughts is that, you know, I, I love, love to see all the, the chatter um, you know, I love, love to see the topic, you know, it's so, you know, I'll say add snowflake in my, in my experience there. Um, you know, it's, it's, it's really all about finding the right solution for the customer, right? Whether that's composable, whether that's, you know, a platform, you know, or package CDP, uh, it, it's, it's, it's up to the customer, you know, it's, it's up to what their needs are, um, and what's going to best fit their, their needs and what the, what their goals are. Um, so yeah, it's, it's fun to watch. Um, but at the end of the, at the end of the day, it's all about serving and helping the customer. Yeah. Um, Glenn, what do you think? Uh, anything to add to that? I think that the most important thing, like Luke said, is figuring out what's the solution or the, the problem we're trying to solve. I think that reverse ETL um, can do the job in a lot of cases where you need a very specific pinpoint solution. Imagine, and I'm talking about data activation now, if you have transactional data in your data warehouse and you need to feed the Facebook conversion API, it's a very point solution where reverse ETL will be very good. If you need to solve more problems than that or have more challenges and the range of challenges that you have is way wider and you need more components, I think a package CDP could be a very good solution in order to get that done. Um, so it kind of depends, again, what the business need is and going from there to figuring out what are the needs that you have on a functional and a technical level to then figure out what's the best solution for you because most of the debates today are at the very technical level. This is more performant than this or this is better than that. While there are cases to be made for both camps, in the end, the question is just like, what do we need in order to solve the problem that we have now? Yeah, and, and you successfully deployed package CDP that organizations that probably already have data warehouse too. So do um, you have anything to say about that? It's true that we did that <laughs> to start with, but there's really an added value um, to have customer data warehouses in combination with CDPs for the simple reason that Customer data warehouse cater for a lot of things, right? In our guide, you see it's like it's SDKs, behavioral data, it's a unification engine, data quality, all of those things. But the data warehouse is still in a lot of cases like the computational elements in, in your stack. It allows you to calculate stuff, which usually a CDP isn't very strong at or does up to a certain degree. If you want your custom models, if you have your engineering departments, your data scientist teams working on churn models in next best recommendation engines, all of that stuff, the complementarity between a data warehouse and a CDP is absolutely there for the CDP to generate the data, put it in the data warehouse, then those teams do whatever they need to do, get the trades or the properties, whatever you want to call it, for each of the users yeah. to calculate, and then get it back into the CDP to automate all of that act uh, activation. That's usually yeah. the way uh, the way we do it. Luke, what would you add to that? Yeah, no, absolutely. Uh, Snowflake, you know, we call ourselves the data cloud because it is, you know, more than just a data warehouse solution at the end of the day, right? It's now you can pull in data sets, right, from from third parties. Um, you can develop apps on on top of it to you know for you know, internal teams uh, with something like Streamlit. So it's you know the like like uh, Glenn has mentioned with these, with these different use cases, whether that's data engineering or data science. There's a lot more customization that you can do and a lot of heavy lifting, right, that then can go back out via packaged or via composable. Um, doesn't, doesn't necessarily matter, um, you know, for, for the marketing team. Uh, so, yeah, lots, lots of different options there. But, yeah, use, use your data warehouse, you know, use your cloud data platform, however you want to call it, um, uh, for the heavy lifting on the, on the process. And prior to Snowflake, you, you worked at Message Gear, so you're well versed with, you know, what it takes customers to activate data that's in the data warehouse. So mm -hmm. have you come across instances where, you know, the data that, that was in the warehouse wasn't uh, optimized for activation, you know, or, or, or some of the data that was needed wasn't there? Do um, you have anything, you know, to share with us about your experience? Yeah, no, absolutely. So being a little caref careful there, 
Um, <laughs> it's, a, it's a wide range, right, yeah. of, of experience there. Uh, I'm sure. For, you know, on the on the on the on the on the good side, or on the on the very very fast side, I remember you know we we would walk in sometimes and say, oh you know hey message gears, you know you just solved uh, a solution. So message gears being a customer engagement platform, yeah. right? At the end of the day, hey you know look you you guys just came in here in three hours solved what it took our both our CDP and our ESP nine months to solve. Nice. Right, that's on the good side. On the bad side, it would be okay. We would have to go in and work with the, the marketing team to understand the use cases and then look at the data and go, oh, that's not in the that's not the, the right format that we need it for. So it would be, you know, uh, anywhere from six to twelve weeks to work with the data the data team before we could even then start to even build out the you know the, the customer journeys or the you know the actual marketing use cases for you know for that data. Right. So it's it's a wide range of experiences there from, from my point of view. Would some of those on the, you know, the, on that six to 12 week side been better served by a CDP? Maybe, honestly, maybe, right? Uh, especially when you need data collection involved as, as, as a part of that, yeah. right? The, on the behavioral data side. Um, but at the, end of the, at the end of the day, all of those brands that I worked with wanted control and ownership of, of their data. That's why that solution worked very well for them, you know, in either, in either side of that spectrum. There's an interesting piece, if I can, like, kind of dig into that and get your thoughts. Um, we're always talking about like every every organization has a data warehouse, right? But from where we stand or I stand and working with a lot of clients, like there's a, a thousand variations of data warehouse, right? They're not, not all created equal. And when we talk about customer activation or data activation in the context of customer data, you kind of need a fairly specific setup or model, whatever you want to call it. Um, we do, for instance, data warehousing purely for reporting on ad spends to get some different things out of there and, and feed dashboards. Like from, from the perspective of today's Snowflake, how important is the whole discussion around customer data activation for you in the total amount of use cases that, that Snowflake is actually used for, right? Because you can port any type of data in a customer data warehouse or in a data warehouse, but then only a specific piece is customer data, right? Yeah, I mean, so it's as of, of all the different use cases, you know, it's the activations. A, it's a it's a very big use case. But like you're saying, right? You can do, you know, when it comes customer data is more than just. And I know, you know, ARPIT prefers audience data. So sorry, <laughs> ARPIT. We think about customer data, right? Customer data is more than more than just activation, too, right? It's analytics. It's it's again, I mentioned the marketplace and enrichment. So the, when it comes to customer data, it's it is you know the story really is more for us. Um, a, Again, in my experience, you're not speaking officially for Snowflake, right? It is more just about about the customer data, um, you know, strategy, and not necessarily just about activation. But activation is, of course, a large part of it. So, then in the next section, I'm just gonna like read out a few statements, and Luke would would love to get your quick thoughts on these. Um, starting with the composable CDP will beat the package CDP. <laughs> um, no comment. <laughs> <laughs> okay. I feel like any, any 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 response or any any answer to that might might uh, upset some people. So yeah, I'm just gonna say no comment. <laughs> okay. Uh, composable CDP is largely a marketing term propagated by reverse ETL vendors. There's an argument for that, sure. Um, but you know, there's you know, at the end of the day, you could you could argue that SaaS software in general is becoming more composable, right? Yeah. Um, you know, solutions like Snowflake and even some of our competitors, right, who, who are also arguably doing a good job at this too, but they have made, you know, data, plat data platforms much, and then just with data, data warehouse, right, as a, as a function, a lot more accessible today than it has been in, in the past. You know, you don't have to have all of this on-prem architecture that you have to manage. It's, it's all managed for you. Um, and so it's, it's, it's a lot more accessible these days. And so with that, I think has come this change of just more composable SaaS. I, I like the idea of what you said that SaaS is becoming more composable. Like if you think of it, originally it was a best of breed stack where you would have like analytics and you would have a CDP and a data warehouse. And now we're kind of opening up all of these components individually and figuring out what to do with it. So it used to be like uh, best of breeds. Then there's the modern data stack, the package CDP, composable CDP, but also like some organizations are integrating some elements that were part of best of breed into their solution. So you kind of get like this in very interesting mix. 
And I think the conclusion of like SaaS is becoming more composable is a very, very good one because there's like, it's like a box of Lego blocks, right? Uh, you can, you want to build a castle and you can kind of like use the blocks you want and make it look like whatever you want. And in the end, it's still a castle, but it's the one that you like. So uh, <laughs> yeah. kind of like the yeah. analogy. Uh, two more statements for you, uh, Luke. Uh, Snowflake and the other cloud providers will make ETL and reverse ETL obsolete in the next five years. Hmm. Wow. That's another good one. Uh, not obsolete, but easier. Yes. I'm not going to say obsolete. No, I think, I think making it, I think making that obsolete, you know, that, that there's a lot with that term, making it easier. Like that's it's, it's in every cloud data platform's best interest to make both ETL and reverse, the movement of data, you know, much, much easier. Yeah. Sure. Okay. And the last one, there's an opportunity for both camps to come together and, you know, solve more pressing problems related to data governance and privacy compliance. Absolutely. I mean, it's, you know, it's things are changing all the time on the privacy and the compliance side. Uh, it's, and so and we all have to keep up, right? Whether that's, you know, whatever, whatever side of the business you're in, you, everyone has to keep up. So there's absolutely a lot more collaboration that can be done there on, on best practices. Well, awesome. Um, that's it for me. Um, Glenn, if you have anything else to ask, now's the right time. I'm good. I think it was a very interesting conversation to 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 have with somebody who's actually right in the middle, right? Uh, you're more of a, I guess, a, a spectator to what's going on <laughs> because both things work out. Um, so yeah, very happy to have this conversation. Very interesting thoughts and uh, very curious to what you guys or at Snowflake will be built in the coming years as well to see how that will evolve. From from what I've seen here, we're trying to be that customer data layer, right? For you know, across all of customer data, right? Not necessarily you know, whether whether that's you know a packet more packaged solution, right? But that's a composable solution. It doesn't matter. We we want you know it's it's for a lot of our customers, it's been about destroying data silos, right? And, and getting data all together, right? So that it can be worked from, and um, that's kind of what we're, I think what we're looking for is to be that data layer um, for all these different SaaS vendors. So. Cool. And no hard feelings, Luke, uh, for using the term customer data. I understand it's really hard to, you know, get people to like change terminology and it's not even so important at the end of the day, right? It's just, it's just a narrative. So, well, thanks for watching. Um, hope this has been fun and this is just one of the follow-up uh, episodes and we'll be releasing more episodes in the coming weeks just to keep the conversation going and, you know, strive to bring people together. Thank you.